How did you become involved in the GA and what is your earliest GA memory? My my earliest memory would have been when I was about eight or nine. I'd have been uh, over at Hugh's Street beside us on the kicking and over with John and Finn and Mick McGee or Eddie Daniel. I used to meet him on the evening and kicking through Hugh's Street to crossroads. You know, how was supposed to make them all kick a football? Really are. And what about organised football? As in the club here? Oh, well, I didn't get involved until I was playing, let's say, playing juvenile football. You know? Did your family have a tradition or history of the GA involvement? No, no, just not the job. John Green was dead, doing it down the road there for me, Dad, and I. He was involved in football here. He was a great team, he was a great manager for the work of football. In fact, he bought me a first football in Rad, just when I think of it now. Um, did your relative discuss their GA experiences with you? What would what I would come show on there? There's lots of other women. It's not that I wouldn't care about it. I would come from a very strong tradition for them. Not when my parents were to were very born or were very young, but from an outside of the house. And John would have been involved very early on with? Oh, John would have been involved with me. In fact, John would have been involved. Really, I suppose, with much the same time as I uh, got involved with John Finn and them boys who were kicking through the field or something, even if you used to stay there, or tell Jordan and them and I used to, I used to be there and meet David Jordan and a couple of years, you know. But John Finn had a great, John, one of John had a great, you know, uh, a great, whatever you want to call it, say over me or run over me in football. And, uh, I want to remind him, uh, I can always remind him, he was the first one near me to take the ball on two feet, right foot or left foot. You know, I'd always mind that. And it's a thing I want to do, I want to take the ball to him, you know, to see that one. But I always could do that, he was the man, he would have been the one that would have taught me that, you know. Has the GA affected your family life in the later years after your marriage? Well, Apparently, the way it was, uh, if, you didn't, <laughs> if you didn't go to football in our house, you'd stop and stay at home, just and that was the bottom line. And yeah, my mum was sort of, sort of half understood in my life. It was four weeks of marriage, you know, and then I was She knew the crack. She knew the crack, too. Go with her. But they had the hang, you know. Uh, what role does, does your club play in the local community? It keeps it an identification in the area, right, John? Without it, we don't know much from it. There's not as much in this area? There's not a thing. There's not, as far as I know, there might be obvious as much from the but for, for me, the GA is a hard thing to make. Fair enough. There's no other sort of much about that. Yeah. Tell us what it was like to support your club down through the years when you're that young and going to games and what the grounds was like. Do you remember any old grounds? I would have surely. I mean, uh, you always change behind the hedge. Was that the old ground here? Uh, uh, that field, which uh, when we were up here, we had the reserve broken hall here. And uh, up at the top of this time, they were spent in the late area in the 50s, I think, I don't know if I made it, but we had uh, to change it. But there was places you would want to, at our tournaments and stuff, and uh, you, you just had to change. You just just change around the side of the edge, you know. Tournaments were a big thing. The war tournaments was a very big part of my life, Sean. It was a very big part of our club because when you're in the when you're in there for the championship, the tournaments held your team together for the rest of the for the rest of the, the season. The rest of the summer. Oh, the rest of the summer, you know, the tournaments were big. We were going back around that time. The club held its own tournaments. 
You won the Blair Girl tournament? No, we never played the tournament. No. no. What about the county team down through the years? Did you want to see them much? No, oh, I went on with my name. <coughs> Did you? Travelling would have been a lot tougher then than it is now. No, it Good. That's good. It's good for as far as I can remember. It's good for the club, that you know. 
What role did the GA play as part of your school life, if any? It played a big part. I, all I done was play football. I was on late fires. I must have been mentioned. I don't know if there's not he used to send me gas yeah, sticks and throw a football out. See, you can a bit of football. Right there. Me and Molly get carried out. Who do you admire most in the GA and why? One person or? It has to be at the minute or it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what's for you. To me, I think one of the most honest or still spending right made was, was John Reilly. Cross my head. John Reilly. Former county chairman. That's my experience, but I had a couple of, had a couple of, I don't know, and crazy things, and different things, I thought it was. He tell you, tell you the way the thing was. That was it. There was no back door, it was still up. Mm. Do you think the role of women in the GA has changed over the years? I do. Because there's a lot of women involved in the GA at the moment. But I mean, it's like a frag club. For better or worse? For better. Uh, because we were, we were in a position to have three or four women in our club outside of this. And I'm not talking about anybody at the minute, time and time. I'm only talking about the ones that have been there. And I don't think any club could have three or four better secretaries than the women we had. Describe the role of the churches and clergy in, in your club. <clears throat> they never got involved much in our club. We, I knew it was called the Dodgy Man. The question was like, Father Pop, the only Father Pop Smith, and Father Sean Higgity were very seldom. I can only, or maybe I wasn't here. And some of them did come down through our yet. I never seen them anywhere. You know, that was their business, I didn't know why, but uh, them, them was the only men in the grave, call them once they were. Mm -hmm. uh, was there a connection between politics and the GA for you? No. At no time when you not in my club really they made not only by me really no no that was it. Um, describe your experiences with teams as a player manager. Player or manager, did you ever manage any teams or <laughs> <laughs> senior teams or under age teams? No, I just had the experience one team run the team and I don't know. Maybe in the team. I didn't get many happening now. Oh, 
what's the biggest challenge challenges facing the GA in the future that you see? Uh, getting finance to keep jobs ahead of a lot of getting actually the money in it and all out of all bounds, you know. Yeah. Who are the people within your club that you looked up to as a child? When you were young, a young man in the red club, who was the main that ran the club and the older players that you looked up to? The main that ran the club would have been, uh, at that time, would have been, when I had created the club, it was Francis Hughes, Lord Richmond, Al Dillon, George Brannigan, Charlie O'Neill around the road, all day and he used to do the game. Jimmy Hagen was a big team. Uh, Jimmy Hagen was a kid, he was a big fan of the team. Uh, Jim McGrath. Some of them men would have been there at the formation of the club. They would have been, and Charlie O'Neill, and he left the team, and Charlie O'Neill used to be around the room, could have been there during that time. George Brannan. Out of all the players you've seen through your life in the club, who do you consider the greatest club players that we have had? That we have had? Yeah. From, are you talking about from... From you can remember as well now. Well, I think them in rotation, but uh, we had a lot of very good players, but... Uh, I would have to say, in his time, the best club player, in his time, the senior club player, he was probably down. And it was my age too. I wonder if more modern times. Eh. Uh, will you come down? Then you come down to Bainer. And Bainer left him as far as Sean. Down to that stage. And Bainer left him. Eh. Uh, I could name my half a dozen of those were good senior players. What name them? What name them? John Finnish. What, what about more recent times? Recent times, I from them. Yeah. Uh, no one bought them. I think I'm clear. Now I'm going on. The Bomber. Two of the best players ever wore our jerseys. Bomber was now going on and the Bomber. No one bought them. Colin McLean. On the other side of things, what about the greatest club administrators? From the time maybe the pitch was new pitch was got to the, the club discos, the people that was be behind the scenes. Well, if you talk about the club and the discos, to me, Jim would be a be uh, in my time. Mick Smith, God bless him. No, he was a chairman, he was not there. Eh? Are there any great social or fundraising events that you remember fondly? I don't tell her. 
You have Gromsons now playing football. What do you see the future for them from the club? Well, all I can hope is that they stick with the club and live a part of a club but to keep the football going in the inner club and maybe we're lucky enough to win something. If they make it, they'll come and they have to give it a go on them, you know. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add? Have you spoke about her? Yeah. No, I'm not sure about her, but there's not that. No, not really, no. Um, 